You may have seen news stories over the years about the predictions made by the University of Michigan's research seminar and quantitative economics annual conference. Their forecasts often make front page news and inform the decisions made by business and political leaders, decisions that affect us all. Remember that explanation of the matrix? The matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. Yeah, well, that's like the economy. We don't notice it, but it's all around us, always. That's why so many outlets take their cracks at economic modeling and forecasting. And nobody's been doing it longer than the University of Michigan's research seminar in quantitative economics. We're the longest running organization of its kind in the world. And in a sense, you can say we invented the field. Every fall since 1952, at its annual Economic Outlook Conference, the RSQE has been bringing together interested parties from academia, business, and politics to talk. Talk publicly. We cannot continue to run up foreign debt with other countries at the rate we're doing it. If the government wants to tax financial firms to repay for the cost of part of the bailout. Talk informally and talk intensely. Director Emeritus Saul Hymans has been involved with RSQE for over 35 years and joined an organization that already had a solid national reputation, in part because founder Lawrence Klein was willing to trust the econometric models he pioneered. RSQE has a very prominent reputation. How did that reputation form? We got a very good start. There was uncertainty about which way the economy was going. And most people who looked, government, business economists, thought the economy was going to be going into a very serious recession. Larry Klein said, yes, the economy is going into a recession, but it's going to be very minor. And he was right. So after a very <laughs> short time, everybody came to know that, you know, those guys in Ann Arbor, they know what they're they doing. They had it pegged right. George Fulton is only the fifth director in the long history of the RSQE. So how many predictions do you issue per year, and how accurate have you been? We do one a quarter for the state and one a quarter for the nation, and then we do a few that we don't publish. I think it's fair to say we've been uh, reasonably accurate. If your economy's kind of just growing at cruising altitude, that's easier. But in some sense, we're less useful then. We're more interesting when it's hard. But we, you know, we make larger errors then. We're the only forecasting organization that I know that actually publishes their forecast record. Every year, we put in what we said the year before and what happened and what the error was. And we give an explanation of it. And we've got those errors all the way back to 1952. We're accountable, and I think that helps our credibility. It's that credibility that attracts top talent from around the country to Ann Arbor. Most of the most important economists who have been involved in this kind of economic activity over the years have appeared one time or another at our conference. The program has been around so long that former University of Michigan students, such as David Burson of the PMI Group and Barry Bosworth of the Brookings Institution, are now the kind of top experts that present at the conference. You need to do something big in the short run that people are assured would be paid for in the long run. So how did you first hear about RSQE? I was a student here at the University of Michigan in the early 1960s. I ended up going to graduate school in economics, mainly by accident, because I never arranged to get any other job. And so when I went to graduate school, one of the issues was, how would I ever pay for this? And uh, the RSQE uh, was a seminar program for students. It put out a conference each year. But in addition, it employed about three or four of us every year. I was a student at the University of Michigan getting my PhD in economics. And RSQE was something that the students could work on, not as a course, but uh, to earn some money. Instead of being a teaching assistant, it was like being a research assistant um, to learn more about macroeconomics, learn more about economic forecasting. According to recent graduate Logan Lewis, the RSQE tradition of launching young economists continues to this day. What is it like being a student involved with this program? 
we all get a chance to teach as graduate students. Um, and each additional semester of teaching doesn't necessarily give you that much more. This provides a terrific opportunity for graduate students to finish their work and learn something new at the same time. I think I've learned that there's a, there's a wider world of economic forecasting that in academia we don't have a particularly close association with. It's an unusual group that we have here at Michigan that provides a little bit closer connection um, between the, the real world and the world that the that business cares about uh, and that the state government cares about and uh, the world that academics live in. There's a closer tie there than what most departments have and I think that's very special about Michigan. As these former students go out into the world, they realize that the reputation of the unit and of its annual conference has gone global. How is RSQE thought of in the business community? Well, RSQE is sort of unique. There are a few other uh, institutions that, that have similar things to RSQE, but nothing as well established as RSQE. The national view from RSQE is viewed very highly among other professional forecasters, and so you get people coming to the conference who are not just here from the state of Michigan, who want to hear the national outlook, who subscribe to RSQE on an ongoing basis. Don't just come to the meeting, but get their written reports on a periodic basis to see what RSQE is thinking about. And so businesses can take the more detailed information, not GDP, but what's happening in autos, uh, what's happening in housing, what's happening with interest rates generally, what will the Fed do, will rates go up or down, what will the federal government do, are, are taxes likely to go up or down. Knowing what is likely to happen allows businesses to shape their own decisions. But even with all that talking, the ideas being exchanged and the debates taking place, something you don't hear is blame, rancor, or name calling. This is such a contentious and emotionally charged issue, fiscal policy. How do we move forward with some semblance of hope that some of these issues can be resolved? We have to have a better understanding of what our government really does and how it spends its money. So I think one of the failures has been the government's done a very bad job of explaining to the average American citizen how much of these programs really cost. So most people think the money's all wasted because it's inevitable in a great, big, highly diverse country like this, you're gonna like some of the programs, the ones you benefit from, and the other programs that those other people have are all waste. I think we have to go back somehow as a country uh, to more civil discussions. That's why RSQE's founders made sure the conference and the discussion was open to everyone from the very start. Those guys were pretty smart back then. They decided right away that they had to involve not just academic economists who were doing the research on how do you improve these tools of analysis, but the business people who were doing the work that we were analyzing. If we can't convince them that this is something useful, then maybe it's not so useful. 